Previously on Do It Yourself Vehicle Rigging. Oh, okay. Just pull over. Guys, you should see this shot. It's totally justifying my purchases. Hey, camera nerds. We're here on phase two of June Crane Komodo tracking vehicle testing for tomorrow's clip. We're here at Mick's Ripping on the Gold, Clo Gold Coast. Mick Smith, he's a total legend. And he's hooked us up with a few extra bits and pieces. We've got a vibration isolator here. We've got the uh, Cinemilled tow hitch mount here. So you just come straight out of your tow bar, which is a pretty cool, quick way to get a nice compact setup. Um, you know, more hardcore people would probably have a big uh, black arm or something coming out. I'm not that cool, so I'm just gonna go for something a bit more lo-fi. Uh, we've got the red control app here. So that gives us a real time output from the, uh, Hey, what's up? I'm out of focus, but I've got my focus motors on there yet. And we've got the June Crane remote, which I finally managed to figure out. So as you can see here, I've got the ability to pan, tilt, and roll the camera if I want to. So that's pretty handy. Um, so we're gonna go for a quick cruise, see what kind of um, issues we're dealing with in terms of motor strength and vibration. Rolling with the Solaire HS 25mm. Gonna try going wide open at 1.5 and just see what happens there. Got the Zipbox Pro from Wooden Camera, a couple of Nisi filters in the front here. So yeah, let's go for a cruise, see what happens. Apologies for the shithouse audio on that last piece to camera. That was the afternoon before a six hour drive leaving at 4am the next morning to get to the location and we still hadn't been able to pick up the hero car. So nerves were high, hadn't planned to make a YouTube video so all we had on us was my iPhone. As you can see here, we're starting to get closer to something usable but there's still some unwanted shake in the image. worth noting here that we are filming at 50 frames a second vary speed on a 25 frames a second base rate and shooting slow-mo always covers a multitude of sins so let's take away that crutch and speed it back up to 25 frames a second oh shit that's not great <laughs> I've since learned is that's because the isolator we were using was rated for way higher weight than what we had on it. So really, if you don't match the isolator to the payload, then it's either gonna work way too little or way too much. And that's where you're gonna end up with either that kind of quivery tremor action, or you're gonna end up with something that just falls apart, which you'll see later on. So just to chat quickly about this rig wheels cloud mount. Look, in theory, it's a really good idea. I think in practice, it's definitely got some niches that it's good in, it's, but it's not a silver bullet and really nothing is. I think what we found on the music video was this really came into its own as just a straight bonnet mount. So we were able to just drop the camera onto the bonnet in record time. We didn't even use a gimbal, we just threw the camera directly onto the top of the isolation plate and we got some really, really nice driving shots that I'll be able to show you soon. Fuck, I am just so pumped with this shot. It's actually symmetrical too, how did we do oh, that? Um, <laughs> this is the way focus pullers do it up in the air like this. It's true. It's the way the cool kids do it. There you go, Ben. If anyone wants to hire me as a focus puller, I'm ready. <laughs> infinity. Not quite infinity. Infinity. Not quite infinity. And infinity. And I'm going to leave it at infinity. Look, if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't have spent the money on that. Uh, might have put it towards, say, a more heavy duty isolator or something along those lines. But now that I've got it, I'm sure it's going to come in handy. It's one of those things that you can just whip out for a really quick shot if you need to get um, something on a car and you don't have a lot of time. You need to make sure that the curvature of the car is going to work with these magnets. They do have the ability to extend so that you can kind of follow the curvature of a car if you need to. So look, it's definitely a clever idea. Uh, I just found that the results were a little bit mixed compared to some of the more traditional vehicle rigging approaches. Another thing that's worth taking you through at some point is how you set up the interior of your car for control. So I'm using a power hub, uh, which is a projector product that's got a deep cycle battery in it. It's got a sine wave inverter that gives me 240 volt output. Um, so I can run power boards off that and then use that to power all my monitors and everything else. And then I'm also using the headrest mounts from Cinemild, um, which basically uh, they're a universal product. So they can go onto the headrest, the posts of the headrest are just about any 
any car. And then it gives you a mix of three eighths and quarter 20 threads that you can use magic arms and whatnot to, uh, as much as I hate magic arms, it's probably one of the few places where I'd use them um, to mount your monitors. We rigged it up so we had a Shogun up the front for Ben who was driving the Prado, uh, which is great. So he, it's always good for the driver to see a frame so that they can kind of act intuitively if they can see that they're way off, off base in terms of the, their alignment with the car that they're following. Um, and it was even handy for the drone stuff because we were doing some uh, Inspire 2 X7 drone shots and we wanted to cover so much ground that we basically had to control the drone from our follow vehicle. So we had all our monitors set up hands free so we could just concentrate on the controls. We had Brandon flying and I was controlling the pan and tilt of the gimbal head on the drone. So that was a really good setup. So yeah, definitely worth thinking about how you get your car set up internally for, for good quality control. That about wraps it up for part two of DIY vehicle rigging. Join us next time when we foolishly suction cup an entire motion control rig to the side of a car and some dickhead forgets to bolt the camera on properly.